Hello, in this video I will be explaining to you the lately disclosed slug vulnerability regarding the Theron server that allowed accessing the internal network and was awarded 3.5k dollars. First, let's see how the vulnerability actually worked. In the JSON response to a request of creating a voice call on Slack, the hunter noticed a JSON object called TernAlf with parameters username and password. And obviously, if you're a hunter and you see a clear text credentials in your response, you know it might be a good lead. But of course, first, you need to know where to use these credentials. And actually, the Tern server happens to be on a Slack-core subdomain, which was not listed as in-scope asset on HackerOne's page. That's the domain that uh, Slack has its call infrastructure on. And likely, the researcher carried on because he knew the impact of this potential vulnerability. And to understand it better, let's see what the Tern server actually is. So when Alice wants to send a text message to Bob, via Slack, she sends the text message to the Slack HTTP server and then when Bob requests his messages from the HTTP server, he gets it back, no problem at all. However, when we want to make a voice call, we do not want to be going through the HTTP server because it will cause a big latency and that's something we have to avoid. So in such scenarios, we want to establish a direct UDP connection to stream a media to another client. And when we are in the same local area network, it's no problem. We can just send the data one to another. It's easy and simple. However, when we are a little bit further from each other, things start to get complicated because there are NATs and firewalls, which make it not as easy to establish a direct connection between the clients. And actually, a Tern server happens to be one of the ways around this, because Tern stands for traversal using relays around NAT where NAT stands for Network Address Translation. So it's used to preserve a public address space and it allows an internal network with many local IP addresses to have much less public IP addresses. So it's a good thing, but when we want to establish a direct connection, it becomes a little bit difficult. Especially when we have a specific type of symmetric NAT, which means that for every connection, it assigns a unique IP and port address. So that's where the Tern server comes into play. It's a kind of a last resort where others ways of connection fail. It's something that both Alice and Bob can connect to and it proxies the traffic from one to another. And there are more servers involved in the initiation of this connection via Tern server. And actually the request we saw earlier with the Tern server credentials, hostname and a few other parameters was one of the requests in this initiation process. And because the Tern server needs some kind of authentication and the client needs a direct connection, it's actually nothing wrong in the fact that the username and password were sent in plain text to the client. It's actually how it works. But rather what the vulnerability was here is that Tern server is obviously connected to the Slack internal network. And by design, it allows the client to make a connection and proxy its request to an address specified by the client, which means the client can request to proxy his traffic to the internal network. And it's actually what the vulnerability was here. The attacker asked the Tern server to proxy his traffic to the internal network, and then he could, for example, request the metadata and get the credentials to the server. So according to the RFC, the Tern server should have a blacklist of IP addresses that the clients are not allowed to proxy to. And that's exactly what the vulnerability was there. There was no blacklist and the client could proxy everywhere. Moreover, the functionality of voice calls only needed the UDP protocol, but the Tern server also allowed the TCP protocol to be proxied, which of course increased the impact a lot. So that's the high level overview of the vulnerability here. If you want to get into detail of how does the Tern server work and why it's necessary, I will give you uh, specific links in the description. An important takeaway from this report is also a good cooperation of the reporter with the Slack company. He provided them with a good details of how to fix this vulnerability 
and multiple times verified the fixes deployed by the company. I'm convinced it has increased the bounty he was awarded. It was 3.5k. And also we can see that he uses some custom tools specifically built to exploit the term server. And actually I've done some research and happened out that this researcher Sandro Gauci is a CEO of Enable Security Company and they specify in identifying vulnerabilities in WebRTC and VoIP functionalities. So another takeaway here is that it's a good idea to find a niche, build a good toolset around it and be an expert in some area. This vulnerability is on a little bit lower network level than most of the web bugs, but I hope you now understand it a little bit better. If you have, leave a like and thank you.